currency crisis. Well, looking at the main benchmarks now, the futures for the Dow Jones Industrial Average were down 0.58%, while futures for the S&P 500 were up 0.53%. Futures for the Nasdaq 100 were down 0.69%. And Asian shares closed mostly low on Wednesday trade, shrugging off the positive tone on Wall Street as the dollar held firm in the wake of Turkey's currency crisis. The Shanghai Composite eased 2.06 percent, notching a third straight session of declines. Hong Kong's Hansen Index traded down 1.6 percent, with losses in tech and materials weighing on the index. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 declined 0.68 percent, following the last session's near 500 point bounce. Now, the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, on Tuesday announced that his country would boycott U.S. electronic goods like the iPhone in retaliation for punitive sanctions from Washington that have led to a plunge in the value of the lira. While some Turks support the announcement, others think otherwise. The crisis in Turkey's currency may have taken a breather on Tuesday, but in an ongoing spot with the United States, the country's president has not. If they have iPhones, there is Samsung on the other side. That's a response to U.S. sanctions and higher tariffs that contributed to a plunge in the value of the lira to a record low of 7.24 to the dollar. The Turkish currency recovered some ground on Tuesday morning, rising around 5 percent, but the feud with the U.S. has not eased. Talks expressed differing opinions on President Erdogan's announcement. Hours after the announcement, an iPhone user bought a new phone for herself at a bazaar selling electronics. This is not my first iPhone. I've been using iPhones for years. As for this situation, I am shopping in Turkey. If these phones are imported to Turkey, I think we can buy them. Boycott doesn't happen with one product. There is iron, steel, silk, fabric and plastic raw materials. These are the products that need to be boycotted. But of course, when you think of America, Apple is the first brand that comes to mind. Therefore, our president wanted to start from there. So, of course, we will support this. If he says, don't sell these phones, we won't. But another shopkeeper disagrees. The chief calls for boycotting U.S. products. As shopkeepers, we fully support this decision. Supported him with our lives on July 15, the day of failed coup attempt, and now we will support him with our goods. We will support him until the end. The lira has lost more than 40 percent this year and crashed to an all-time low of 7.24 to the dollar early on Monday hit by worries over Erdogan's calls for lower interest rates and worsening ties with the United States. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has proposed setting up a sovereign wealth fund to help boost economic growth as it tries to rekindle growth before next year's national election. There were no immediate details on where the money for the fund will come from, but most sovereign wealth funds utilize revenues from oil and gas exports. Economists are skeptical that the country would easily set up a sovereign wealth fund given its large budget deficit and shrinking mining sector. Meanwhile, the South Africa Reserve Bank says the country's economic growth this year will be much lower than initial expectations, calling any recovery weak and choppy. The SARB explains that fixed investment was not expected to pick up meaningfully this year, while inflation risk remained on the upside. Now, the CEO of Goldfields has been defending the mining firm's plan to potentially cut up to about 1,600 jobs at its struggling South Deep mine in South Africa. Mr. Nick Holland describes the move as a last gasp measure. The company made the announcement on Tuesday, citing mountain losses and a consistent failure to meet mining and production targets among the reasons for the move that could see a third of its labor force trimmed. Holland explains that in the past 12 years, shareholders have received no return at all on their initial investment of 22 billion rand, having seen only an outflow of funds. The mine west of Johannesburg employs around 3,600 full-time workers and 1,900 contractors. 
In about 24 hours from now, the Central Bank of Egypt will be holding its Monetary Policy Committee meeting. And economists say the CBE is likely to maintain its deposit and lending rates at 16.75% and 17.75%. They believe the bank is unlikely to further cut rates until inflation cools. In July, headline inflation slowed to 13.5% from 13.4% in June. And core inflation, which strips out volatile items like food, fell to 8.54%, the first single-digit reading since April 2016. Import-dependent Egypt has been battling inflation that ran as high as 35% last year after it floated its currency in late 2016. Senegal is on a multi-billion dollar mission to become self-sufficient in rice by 2020. During the 2008 world food crisis, the country struggled to meet demand for a staple mostly imported from Asia. The government does not want that to happen ever again. In the last 10 years, farmers in Bridget Toll, northern Senegal, have grown more rice than ever thanks to an ambitious government's plan to promote agriculture and self-reliance in food production. Moldy Ba rents plots of land here where he cultivates the grain. In the past, he says he would have to pay laborers to help with the harvest, but can now hire a combined harvester at a cost subsidized by the government. Now we can work on 40 hectares, and with the machine, we can do it in two or three days. Whereas before, when we did it by hand, it would have taken one month. So with this machine, it's amazing. Faced with surging prices for imported rice, the staple for millions in the West African country, former President Abdullahi Wadi unveiled plans in 2008 to raise domestic rice output fivefold in a year. The aim is to boost output from agriculture, fisheries and agro-industry, as well as the mining sector and tourism. And Richard Toll, Water is channeled from the River Senegal to farms. Abu Bakri So is the Deputy General Manager of Said, the organization that promotes irrigation on the left bank of the Senegal and Falame rivers. The food crisis in 2008 created huge difficulties for our population in Africa in a general fashion but also in the world. And that is what brought the first idea to start the big national program of self-sufficiency in rice. The growth program has received financial support from the World Bank and other international donors. It's a review of activities at the Nigerian Stock Exchange when we return in a moment. Please stay with us.